Hello, and welcome to the CardioSmart community on CardioSource. My name is Dr. Andrew Freeman, and I'm editor-in-chief of this new site. I'm joined today by Dr. William Lewis, Chief of Clinical Cardiology at Metro Health Medical Center and Professor of Medicine at Case Western University in Cleveland, Ohio. Today, we'll be talking about shared decision-making. Welcome, William. Thank you. So uh, as, the, as you probably have heard, there's a tremendous buzz uh, about patient-centered care and particularly shared decision-making. What exactly does it mean to share a decision with a patient? So what people are referred to shared decision-making is, is, is informed consent on steroids. I think that that's probably inaccurate to a, a large degree. But what it means is that the decision to do a particular procedure or a particular approach to the patient is actually shared between the physician and the patient. Okay, so, so, you, so in short, you're now sort of, instead of you saying you should do this, you kind of give the patient options and let them choose? Right, and I think that a lot of, in the past, we as physicians felt we did that very well. However, when you look at the data, the, the patients don't remember as much about the, the, the downsides of doing certain things, the contraindications or the other choices. They typically remember a lot of the pro um, things that the physician is, is discussing with them. So they typically don't remember a lot of what, of what the discussion that, that the physician has with them is. So the goal is to take this offline a little bit and to move it into a different, into a different space. Right, so I think you know, one of the initiatives of the college is CardioSmart, which is a, a, an effort to educate our patients and illustrate some of the procedures so people know exactly what they're getting into. And I suspect that it's gonna be a fantastic meld of technology and how we approach our patients that's ultimately gonna allow them to have a voice in the, in the decision process. Right, and I, I think that's exactly correct. The, the problem with the process right now, and that is to include all of the things in a shared decision-making model, to include risks and benefits, which we always think about, but to in, include things that are alternatives to the type of treatment that we're looking at, or to include things that, you know, patients' concerns about themselves, their own feelings about how they want to be treated. To do all of that requires a lot of time and it's not the amount of time that we can actually spend in a single office visit. So we take it offline to get the stress of the situation away, let the patient do it at their own time, and to bring it all together with all of that information all in one fell swoop. Okay, so for example, as a practical approach, let's say I have a patient who needs to go for a coronary angiogram. He's having chest pain and a stress test was equivocal. So do you meet with that patient, go over these results, say you probably ought to consider a cath, but maybe you consider a cardiac CT and then give them a link so they can kind of review some of this information and then meet with them again? Is that how you've been doing things? Absolutely. That's the approach that we would take. And, and you would say that that's a lot of time to spend with a patient, but what you really have done is you've, you've said, here's the approach I want to take. Here's a source for you to go and look at this. I want you to go and do this at, at your own leisure and come back and we'll have another you know, relatively brief discussion about the questions that you have about what you saw so that we can come to a really good uh, decision. Right, and I think this is sort of a no-brainer. You know, when you make any big purchase, a car, a computer, whatever it is, you always do a lot of research to make sure you're getting what you think you're getting and you understand it. So this sounds like people are finally realizing that their body, their most important asset, is actually not too far off from this. That's, a, that's exactly correct. Okay, and so are you finding that, you know, you think that a cath would be the best way to go, let's say, for a patient, and the patient comes up with something completely out of the blue and switches away from where you want to go a lot? Yeah, that's so, a, that's a, uh, so that's going to be a, tut, a, a tough thing for physicians to start grasping. But patients are going to make decisions that may not be in what we would consider their best interests, and we have to be able to, to live with that. This has really been um, one of the mainstays of this has been in the area of of prostate cancer, where patients have gone home and said, I really don't want to pursue this any further. I want, this is the approach I want to take. And that may be completely different from what the physicians, you know, they're, they're kind of feeling that this patient should, um, that that should be their approach. Now, when they come back for that second, for that second visit, you know, they may have information wrong and you may have to instruct them differently or you may have to re-educate them to some extent. No, I think that's a really valid point. You know, one of the things they always taught me in fellowship was that, you know, unless it's an acute or a proximal LAD lesion, stents don't save lives. They improve the quality of life. And if someone opts not to have a stent, 
or an angiogram that will result in a stent, we have to respect that choice and then do our best to manage them and manage their risk as adequately as we can. Well, I would agree with that entirely. I think that there are some situations where it is a no-brainer and we, you know, and, and where things have to be done in a particular way and usually in very acute settings. And CR decision making is not the thing you do when you're on the way to the hospital with an acute ST segment elevation MI. Shared decision making occurs in situations where, where patients, um, where an elective decision is needed to be made and, and the patient really needs to provide a great deal of input. Right, so I think the take home points for our viewers are shared decision making is here to stay. We really need to involve our patients in the way we process the data and then really give the benefit of our expertise and knowledge to the patient, let them think about it, mull it over, do their own research, and then come to a conclusion. So there's no pressure, there's no rush, and everybody's on the same page. I agree, and when you look at the data, the data says that the patient is much, after these types of approaches are used, the patient is more informed, is more confident about their decision, and has less conflict about that decision. No, I think it's, it's great. So thanks so much, uh, William, for spending time with us today to tell us about shared decision making and continue to tune into the CardioSmart community for more information on the value of patient-centered care. I'm Andrew Freeman, and thank you for watching. Thank you, Andrew.